Unless you grew up in the Maritimes, I bet you've never seen anywhere like the Tusket Islands. This remote group of islands off the coast of southern Nova Scotia has one of the oldest fishing villages in the province, and it's still used today. Starting in Wedgeport, Nova Scotia, a short drive from Yarmouth, Tusket Island tours will take you out on the ocean for a fantastic excursion to explore the area by boat. Okay, welcome aboard the John Herald. The boat was built in 2015 and it's a lobster fishing boat. And every boat that you see in the Wedgeport Breaker water, these are all lobster fishing boats as well. Uh, the reason we're heading out into the Tusket Islands is because people used to live here full time. And I get asked all the time, does anybody still live full time out here? And for the most part, nobody does. A lot of the things have changed over the last uh, couple decades. And to this point, nobody really uses the Tusket Islands for the lobster fishing like they used to. However, our neighbors, Bernie and Debbie, live next door to us, close enough that we can almost touch their shanty from ours. And uh, they live there full time. They still have their own car, and they still go to Yarmouth every day, but they don't have a house. They sold their house, and they literally live there year round. And if it has four walls and a roof, and it's on an island, it's called a shanty. And we get a lot of people commenting that uh, these are not shanties, that these are houses or cabins or cottages, but for us, we've always called them shanties. And when my grandfather used to fish in the 50s and 60s, it made sense for him to live in a shanty on an island instead of rowing back home every day when he was done his fishing day. So a lot of those shanties built in those days were very poorly built and most of them don't even exist anymore because people didn't really have any money and those shanties are pretty much gone. Whereas the new ones that are being built today are much better built and are made as cottages that people use um, throughout the summer at least. We had a perfect day for our trip. The ocean was calm and the brothers who host the tour were incredible at sharing stories about their own family's history of lobster fishing. It's one of the best tours that I have ever been on and I'd recommend it to anyone headed to the area. Throughout most of the trip, you can ask questions, they'll play music, and you can get up and walk around the seat area to check out the views. They also don't offer the tour if it's raining or the seas are too rough, so you should call ahead and check on the schedule and make sure that space permits. The tour leaves the wharf at 10.30 a.m. and returns around 2.30 p.m. What I really loved was that this tour was by real Acadian locals who obviously love what they do and they want to share their love for this area. They really make the tour and I loved one major highlight. They actually show you how they bring in lobster traps. That has two licenses, and he can put 560 traps on his boat. Oh, wow. Hmm. Sorry. So now you can get as close as you want. in the back and I was the ball. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Amazing. Wow. He's a big guy. There is one in there. Now, put in there? <laughs> if you're wondering if the lobster often come up with the rubber bands already on the claws. <laughs> oh my god, look at the size of his claws. Yeah. Yeah. This was a gigantic lobster, and it's fascinating to see just how the traps work and what it takes to be in this fishing business. The group I went with loved lobster, but this guy did get back in the trap with a snack to wait for the next tour. After that, they took us toward the main fishing village located between the Harris Island, Dog Island, and Big Tusket Island. But first, there was a look at some history. This area has been used by fishermen for decades, 
And there are a lot of stories about what it's been like over all those years. The brothers showed us some of the shanties in the area and many that are still used today. There are lighthouses and one story that dates back to the war and a very mysteriously abandoned building. And then it was time to head to the village. There's a really rich sense of Acadian history here, with flags flying from some of the shanties and buildings, and there are really very few places like it on the whole East Coast. I had a chance to get a bird's eye view of the area with my drone, and it's amazing to see this remote village on the edge of the ocean without any roads or cars. At the brothers family shanty, they shared more history of the village and let us wander around and then they fed us some of the best seafood chowder that I've ever had and played us some Acadian music. We had just enough time to eat, enjoy the music, and explore a little, but it honestly would have been fun to just stay there a little longer. The village in this whole tour is such an authentic experience. It's not like driving around a bus and seeing some place. You really get a taste of the culture, the history, and what makes it so wonderful and so special. I grew up on the East Coast and this whole tour is like hanging out with a cousin you didn't know you had and getting a tour of their home. Seeing this unique part of Canada was really eye-opening. Just imagine the weather and the lifestyle of being a fisherman. And then imagine how much tougher this would have been 50 years ago. Beyond that, I also just love seeing such a unique, stunning, rugged and beautiful part of the East Coast. I'll say it again, you need to take this tour one day. Tusket Islands has to be one of the coolest places I've been in ages. It's amazing. Look at all the lobster traps. And they even showed us how to pull up a lobster. <laughs> the area around the fishing village isn't very big and they promised they wouldn't leave without anyone. So I walked around a little bit and down to one of the nearby wharfs. It's obviously a spot that's seen a number of summers and winters, and like the rest of the island, it feels very lived in, weathered, and like it must have a lot of stories to tell. Mm -hmm. 
What a day. I loved my whole trip to Yarmouth and the Acadian shores this summer, and the Tusket Islands was a very big highlight. And then it was time to head back to Wedgeport. By the afternoon, it had gotten a bit cooler out in the water. And even though it was over 25 degrees back on the shore, we were all glad we brought some sweaters for the trip back. We had a pretty calm return to the mainland and it only took about 30 minutes to get from the islands back to the harbor. Along the way, we were also treated to some live music by our host. If you're not sure how you'll handle being out on a smaller boat, it was very steady, but it can't hurt to take some anti-nausea medicine if you're afraid of getting seasick. No one on our tour had any issues though, so most people will be fine. Tours are mainly offered in the summer and children under 18 are half price, while children under five are free. And there's also a bathroom on the boat as well as one on the island. Make sure to bring sunscreen, a camera, snacks, and a sweater too, as it can be cooler at times on the water. Thank you so much for watching. Visit the Tusket Island Tours website in the video description and let me know if you have any questions or want to know more. Thanks as well to the Travel Media Association of Canada, Yarmouth and Acadian Shores, and Visit Nova Scotia for the experience and the wonderful hospitality.